The intent of this video is to evaluate the combat effectiveness of the German Mk-108 30mm autocannons had on World War II Allied bombers. Some of the World War II Axis fighter's primary mission was changed from a fighter to a bomber interceptor. This mission change required upsized armament to be effective in destroying U.S. and British heavy bombers. A good example of this armament evolution is the Imperial Japanese Army's Nakajima Ki-84 or Frank Fighter. This unclassified 1947 report details the armament evolution of both Japanese and American frontline fighters. The Frank Fighter was initially deployed with two 12.7mm machine guns and two 20mm autocannons. It was then upgraded with four 20mm autocannons, and in its final version the fighter was armed with two 20mm autocannons cannons and two 30 millimeter auto cannons. The Germans also evolved their bomber interceptors firepower from the standard 7.92 millimeter and 13 millimeter sized machine guns to auto cannons. The auto cannon projectile hits were much more destructive than machine gun bullets. The Germans first adopted the MG 151 20 millimeter and then the more powerful MK-108 30mm autocannons. This image shows the size differences of the World War II 20mm and 30mm projectiles. The effect of German bomber interceptors to more destructive armament is reflected in this declassified 1945 8th Army Air Force tactical deployment report chart. The focus of the U.S. data in this video will be from the 8th Army Air Forces operating out of Great Britain. The 8th operated both B-17s and B-24 heavy bombers. The chart reflects the combat effectiveness of German bomber interceptors. The x-axis of the chart is a month and year. The line in the body of the chart represents the percentage of attacking enemy aircraft whose bullets or cannon projectiles hit the bomber. This is a measure of the effectiveness of the German aircraft in intercepting the bomber formations. The enemy aircraft intercepting effectiveness decreased by orders of magnitude over the period shown. This was due to the increased usage of long-range fighter escort, reduction in German pilot experience, and the general attrition of the German Air Force. The columns within the chart represent the number of bombers lost per every hundred encounters. This is a measure of the fighter's effectiveness in destroying the bomber, once engaged. The effectiveness of German bomber interceptors increased as the war progressed. This is due to increased armament destructiveness of the bomber interceptors and better enemy tactics. In summary, the bomber interceptor's ability to engage the bombers decreased dramatically over time, but the lethality of the bomber interceptors increased over time. The data is based on returning damaged bombers, so there is some survivor bias. German combat footage revealed it took 20 to 25 hits of the MG-151 20mm autocannon projectiles to bring down a heavy bomber, and 3 to 5 hits of the MK-108 30mm projectile to take down a heavy bomber. The autocannons fired various ammo belt mixes depending on the type of target expected. This June, 1944 German Luftwaffe document graphic outlines three categories of ammunition available for autocannons against aircraft. The top image reflects an armor-piercing round contacting a thin airframe skin and then penetrating through the fuel tank. The fuel tank may leak some, but not catch fire. The second graphic shows the effect of the high explosive mine round detonating in a thin aluminum skin panel. The 30mm mine round functions identically to the 20mm mine round except the projectile is scaled up in size. I do not have a 30mm mine round, but I do have the smaller MG-151 20mm mine round to illustrate how it functions. This is a show and tell display of the MG-151 20mm autocannon high explosive mine round. The full cartridge is shown here. A cutaway is shown with the casing and projectiles primer, propellant, and the projectiles thin drawn steel body, explosive fill, and fuse. The intact projectile is fired through the cannon's muzzle with the back pressure gases represented here. The fuse is threaded into the projectile's body. The 20 millimeter cannon's projectile is hollow and contains 18 grams of an explosive fill. The fuse is designed to detonate the projectile's explosive fill one ten thousandths of a second after bomber skin contact. This is enough duration to allow the projectile's forward kinetic energy to bore two-thirds of its length into the skin prior to detonation. 
Upon detonation, the projectile will disintegrate into small steel splinters radiating outward as shown in this view. The splinters and explosion will reduce the airframe structural integrity, reduce its aerodynamic performance, damage the plane's vital systems, and injure or kill crew members. This image shows the entry damage of a 20 millimeter high explosive mine round. The detonation produced a hole in the Spitfire's fuselage about the size of the fighter pilot's face. 20 millimeter projectile detonation powder burn marks are visible radiating outward from the detonation site. This is a backside view of the Spitfire. The fuselage damage due to splinter exit impacts are clearly visible. Additional information regarding 20mm autocannons is covered in the channel's video, The Devastating Effect of World War II German 20mm Autocannons Had on U.S. Bombers. The 30mm mine round projectile is much larger and filled with 85 grams of an explosive fill. The explosive fill of the 30mm projectile is 4.7 times the explosive fill of the 20mm projectile. The size differences of the 20 and 30mm cartridges is shown in this image. The 30mm fuse acts identically to the 20mm fuse. The German 30mm mine round explosive fill is 1.5 times the explosive fill of a World War II style hand grenade. The last cartoon image shows the effect of the 30 millimeter incendiary cartridge. The projectile passes through the thin aluminum skin, penetrates the fuel tank, and detonates. The incendiary projectile is filled with a thermite-like compound. When ignited, the incendiary fill burns with temperatures of 1200 degrees centigrade. The projectile's fuses were hydrostatic and designed to detonate the projectile upon entering the fuel, hydraulic, or oil tank. This German chart shows the ammo mixes adopted based on the anticipated threat. The bomber interceptors used the MK-108 ammo mixes that were 50% high explosive mine round and 50% incendiary. The 30mm armor piercing rounds were not selected for usage in air-to-air -air MK-108 30mm ammo belt mixes. The main drawbacks of the MK-108 30mm cannons were the slow velocity of the projectile, slow rate of fire, and limited ammo capacity. The muzzle velocity equated to 540 meters per second, which equates to 1,770 feet per second, or Mach 1.59. The rate of fire was around 650 rounds per minute. The slow projectile speed necessitated the bomber interceptor's platforms firing the MK-108, needing to open fire at closer ranges. The ME109 Model K6 incorporated three MK108 30mm cannons. Two cannons were integral to the wing and a center cannon fired through the propeller hub. The center cannon extended into the cockpit and rested between the plane's rudder pedals. The wing-mounted MK108 guns will converge their fire at 400 meters as shown in this World War II German BF109 G6 model armament report. The 30 mm projectile will drop 11 feet over this distance. For comparison, a B-17 bomber gunner's effective range was 600 yards. A 50 caliber bullet will have dropped 4 feet 4 inches over a 400 meter distance. The 50 caliber bullet has a longer effective range and drop less over the same distance as the 30 mm projectile due to its 58% greater muzzle speed. So how devastating was the MK-108 30mm autocannons in taking down heavy bombers? The British conducted tests to determine the various 30mm projectiles' effectiveness in destroying fighters and bombers. This clip shows an MK-108 cannon firing a German 30mm high-explosive tracer round at a Spitfire wing. The high-explosive mine round bore partially into the wing prior to detonating. The detonation reduced the wing's structural integrity and aerodynamic performance. The primary spanwise upper and lower outer fiber skin load paths have been severed. This hit would likely be fatal. This clip illustrates the overpressure rupture effect of the MK-108 30mm high explosive mine rounds detonating in an enclosed body. The built up explosive gases catastrophically ruptured the Spitfire's aft fuselage cavity. The impulse hoop and longitudinal pressure loads unzipped the production skin splices, severing the frames and stringers. The MK-108 splinter's exit side damage can also be observed. 
The British also tested the 30mm projectiles on a Bristol medium bomber. The fuselage damage of this hit was considered lethal as the structural integrity of the airframe would no longer be able to carry loads. All of the fuselage's primary longitudinal and circumferential load paths have been severed. The Bristol bomber's wing was shot at with an MK-108 incendiary round. The fuel tanks were empty. Post-damage evaluation indicates the damage was likely lethal. This clip shows the effect of the MK-108 30mm incendiary round had on a full production fuel tank. The results are catastrophic. This image shows the fuel tank and the MK-108 projectile splinters collected. This declassified 8th Army Air Force tabular data chart outlines the causes of bomber damage from January 1944 through May 1944. 20mm cannon shells accounted for 668 of the 15,008 causes of bomber damage, or 4.5%. Rockets and 30mm cannon shells comprised only 13 of the 15,008 causes of bomber damage. We need to be careful in the data interpretation since it is based on returning bombers only. This unclassified 1947 U.S. Strategic Bombing Survey report included a section comparing aircraft cannon differences between the Imperial Japanese Army and the German Air Force. The report notes the vulnerability of American bombers to the MK-108 has been clearly demonstrated in the European theater. Another report states that while these larger cannon caliber weapons were effective against bombers, they had reduced effectiveness against fighters. This is the only image I could find where a returning B-17 bomber's combat damage has been attributed to the MK-108 30mm round fired from an ME-262 jet. In summary, the German MK-108 30mm autocannon hits were crippling to both U.S. and British bombers. However, the dedicated German bomber interceptors needed to open fire at closer ranges, which left them vulnerable to both fighter escort and bomber gunners. The MK-108 cannons traded lower airplane performance, lower muzzle velocity, less accuracy, lower rate of fire, low ammo capacity for devastating hits. If you've enjoyed this video and want to see more, please consider liking, commenting, or subscribing to the channel World War II U.S. Bombers.